Why do we often find ourselves being too soft, too accommodating, even when it brings us pain? This question has puzzled many who walk the path of kindness. To be soft, we think, is to be good. To be soft, we believe, is to be virtuous. But in reality, softness can often lead to an imbalance, an emotional burden, a weakness that others exploit, and ultimately, a loss of peace within. Gautama Buddha once said, you, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. If we pour ourselves out to others without boundaries, we leave nothing for ourselves. This teaching holds profound wisdom about the consequences of being overly soft and the need for balanced compassion. The lesson begins, the overly soft monk, once, in a serene temple nestled by a river, there lived a monk known for his boundless kindness. He greeted everyone with a smile, helped every soul that crossed his path, and never turned down a request. To all who knew him, he was a pillar of gentleness, someone who embodied the teachings of compassion. People admired him, but deep down, he was troubled. One day, as he sat in meditation, his heart weighed heavy. He had been asked once again to give up his daily meal for a hungry traveler passing through the temple grounds. For the monk, this was not unusual, he had given up his food for others many times before. But today, there was a small voice within him that protested. He had been hungry all day, and yet, as always, he had smiled and said nothing, that night, the monk could not sleep. He lay in his bed and wondered why he felt so unsettled. Wasn't this what compassion was about? To give to others, even at the cost of one's own comfort. But as his mind churned, he realized a disturbing pattern. Every time someone needed something, he was the one to give it. But when he needed something, even if just a small moment of peace, there was no one to help him. The illusion of endless giving, as days passed, the monk continued his routine of service, but the seed of doubt had been planted. He began to notice how those around him took his kindness for granted. They knew that if they asked, he would say yes. Whether it was a task in the temple, a favor to be done, or a shoulder to lean on, the monk was the first they turned to, one evening, an elder monk noticed his tired eyes and called him aside, why do you look so weary, my friend, the elder monk asked, I do not know, replied the soft-hearted monk. I only try to help others as much as I can. Yet, I feel drained, as though something is missing within me, the elder monk smiled gently and said. You give so much that you have forgotten to care for yourself. Compassion without boundaries is not true compassion. It becomes an invitation for others to take advantage of you. The Buddha teaches us to love others, but he also teaches us to love ourselves, the soft monk was puzzled. Isn't it selfish to put myself first, the elder monk shook his head. It is not selfish. It is wisdom. The Buddha once said that an overflowing cup of water spills and wastes itself. But if the cup is kept full and balanced, it can continue to nourish others without losing its essence, the consequences of over-accommodating, the next morning, as the soft monk resumed his duties, he began to test the wisdom of the elder monk's words. A young disciple came to him with a request, asking him to help with cleaning a large area of the temple. Normally, the monk would have agreed without hesitation, even if it meant foregoing his own responsibilities. But today, something felt different. He hesitated, I have my own duties to tend to, he replied, but I can assist you once I am finished with my work, the young disciple was shocked. Never had the monk refused a request. 
His face showed disappointment, and he grumbled as he walked away. For a moment, the soft monk felt guilt creep in, he was not used to seeing such reactions. But as he continued with his day, he noticed something, he had more energy, more clarity. He had taken care of his own tasks, and as a result, he felt more at peace, over time, the monk began to say, no, more often. At first, those around him were confused, even upset. They were used to his soft-hearted nature, his willingness to drop everything for their needs. But gradually, they began to respect his boundaries. They asked for less, and when they did ask, it was with more consideration. Learning the balance, one day, a group of travelers came to the temple seeking shelter. The soft monk, still learning the balance of compassion, was approached by the leader of the group. We are tired and hungry from our journey, the leader said. Could you give us food and a place to sleep, the monk's heart softened for them. He had been a traveler once, wandering in search of wisdom, and he knew the weariness of the road. But he also knew the temple had limited resources that needed to be managed carefully. He looked at the travelers and said, We have food and shelter to share, but only for the night. After that, you must continue your journey, the leader frowned. We had hoped to stay for longer. Can you not extend your hospitality? The soft monk felt the familiar urge to accommodate, to give more than was wise, but he took a deep breath and replied, We are here to help travelers, but we must also preserve our resources for others who will come after you. A single night is our offering, and we give it with full compassion, the travelers accepted his decision and stayed for the night. As they left the next morning, the monk noticed something remarkable. Rather than feeling depleted, he felt a sense of inner balance, a peace that came from offering help while maintaining his own well-being, the power of self-respect, days passed, and the monk's reputation began to change. No longer was he seen as the endlessly accommodating figure who could be leaned on without consideration. Instead, people began to see him as someone who offered wisdom and help, but with strength and boundaries. They began to respect him in ways they hadn't before, for now, his kindness was paired with self-respect, he started teaching others what he had learned, that being soft, without limits, is not truly beneficial. It is like a river that overflows its banks, causing destruction where it once brought life. True compassion requires strength. It requires the ability to say, no, when necessary, to protect oneself from being drained and depleted, why is it, he would ask his students. That we are so quick to give everything away to others, yet so hesitant to protect our own well-being, one student replied, because we are afraid of being seen as selfish, the monk nodded. Yes, that is the root of it. But we must understand that selfishness and self-care are not the same. Self-care is about maintaining our strength so that we can continue to serve others in a way that is healthy and sustainable. If we allow ourselves to be emptied, we can offer nothing. The final test, compassion with boundaries, one fateful day, a rich merchant arrived at the temple, seeking the monk's guidance. The merchant had heard of the monk's wisdom and wanted his advice on a pressing matter. I have been generous my whole life, the merchant explained, giving to those in need, supporting my family, and helping my community. Yet, I find myself taken advantage of. People expect me to give endlessly, and when I try to set limits, they call me selfish. What should I do? The monk looked deeply into the merchant's eyes and said, generosity is a virtue, but without boundaries, it becomes a burden. Like a tree that bears fruit, you must allow time for yourself to regenerate. 
to grow, and to be strong again. If you give all your fruit at once, you will have none left, and both you and those who rely on you will suffer. The merchant was silent for a moment, contemplating the monk's words. But how do I set boundaries without feeling guilty? The monk smiled. Guilt comes from misunderstanding your own worth. When you recognize that you, too, are deserving of care and respect, you will see that setting boundaries is not an act of selfishness, but an act of self-love. And only by loving yourself can you truly love others. The merchant bowed his head in gratitude, for he understood that true wisdom lay not just in giving, but in knowing when to stop. The awakening of strength, as the seasons passed, the monk continued to practice and teach this delicate balance of compassion and strength. His life became a reflection of the Buddha's words, You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. He learned that being soft to everyone without boundaries leads not to peace, but to exhaustion and resentment. By setting limits, he found that his kindness became more meaningful, his help more genuine, and his own soul more at ease. The world around him respected his boundaries, and in return, he could give from a place of strength, not from a place of depletion. In the end, the monk realized that to stop being soft to everyone was not a rejection of compassion, but its ultimate fulfillment. For only when we are whole within ourselves can we truly serve others. And so, he continued his journey, still kind, still compassionate, but now, with the wisdom of balance guiding his every step, this, dear listener, is the essence of true compassion, to give not this, dear listener, is the essence of true compassion, to give not from an empty heart, but from one that is full and strong. The monk learned that softness without boundaries leads to imbalance, not peace. By embracing self-respect, he discovered that saying, no, was not a rejection of kindness, but a path to deeper, more meaningful compassion. The lesson he shared with others, and ultimately with himself. Was this, to truly love others, you must first love yourself. Only then can your kindness be a gift, not a burden. Thanks for watching. Hope enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Just click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.